that would be the topic I'd like to discuss. I have experts. Private vouchers and have experts come in, try to explain. <laughs> All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Please rise and join me in the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Item three, I need a uh, motion to adopt... Uh, Adoption of the agenda and consent agenda as an order of business with the identification of items to be taken off the consent agenda for discussion or separate action. I move we adopt the agenda and, cons and consent agenda as the order of business. Second. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Now we need to consider approval of the cons consent agenda as adopted to approve the minutes of the September 20th, 2022 Board of Education meeting, to approve the financial report for the period of July 1, 2022 through September 30th, 2022, and item C to approve the bills for the period of September 1, 2022 through September 30th, 2022 in the amount of Two million eight hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty nine cents. Thank you. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as stated in those three areas. Second. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed. All right, item five, board and district leadership team strategic planning, legislative update, Mr. Mella. Yes, uh, kind of going back to some of the issues that we were just discussing, having been frozen in funding for the past three years and going on into the fourth coming up. Uh, we meet with our legislators as county superintendents uh, once a month, we did that on Monday. Uh, this month, we actually met with all of the legislators who represent, uh, well, all that were able to get there, that represent the CESA 7 school district. We're part of the CESA 7 area, which is from the tip of Door County down to south of Random Lake uh, and over to, our, to Lake Winnebago. So that kind of northeast swath, all, all the districts that are there. Um, so we met with the, the, uh, the representatives as well. And again, we're advocating for some of the same things we were just talking about, which is to uh, fund education appropriately. Uh, again, we've been frozen with our revenue limits for the past three years and going on four coming up. Everybody's supplementing with ESSER funds, creating a uh, structural deficit that we've termed the fiscal cliff. The legislators are even using that term and in conversations with Representative Kitchens, uh, who is kind of key in that whole group now, now that Luther Olson is missing, at least they did recognize verbally to the entire group that it is an issue that does need to be solved. Um, but there's a lot of, it's election season and there's a lot of unwillingness to put themselves out there. And there's also um, political uh, verbiage that is, um, kind of painting everybody into corners uh, currently. So uh, so we're advocating for uh, relief for the fiscal cliff upcoming, and hopefully that they're, uh, they have recognized it and they know that uh, it is something that does need to be addressed. Um, we've talked again about the political uh, and campaign messaging around uh, public education. Uh, because you'll see advertisements where it'll from our state chamber and WMC and Will that are saying things like failed public schools. It's in their it's in their platform, and so everybody's getting lumped together as failed public schools, and we're trying to find common ground and say and representing uh, the things that you know our school district is doing and doing well, and the districts in Sheboygan County that are doing and doing them well, and we don't think that it's uh, uh, fair or even accurate uh, talking about you know uh, failed public schools I mean many of our students our kids have gone through these schools and they're doing great and uh, so we should be proud of the our public schools and we should be proud of our 
partner of private schools and proud of our local industry and we should work together and so we advocate in that way. Um, we also uh, talked again uh, and advocated again for a state report card that would not drive us towards pushing everybody to a four-year college track kind of education, which our local industry does not want. We are a manufacturing and, a, and an agriculture state in general, and uh, and some and now even more hospitality, and so even our industry doesn't want that. And so, but our report card drives us to a four-year college track. We need to be given credit in the score that's publicized. If we're going to publicize these things and make it a competitive market, then we need in the, in that score to have included uh, points or percentages for all the kids that we put into to youth apprenticeships, all the kids that are going through CTE train uh, work in our business classes and, and, and those types of things, all of our kids who are do, doing service in the community or are in service organizations, all of those things make a whole person, not just a score on one day a year in reading and math. And so we keep advocating for that as well. So uh, we keep pushing, I think, they're listening, and uh, at least I can tell you that our superintendents are unified in that mes message across our entire CESA and in our county. So that's where we are. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, six, Academic Pillar of Excellence, Riverview Spotlight. Thomas, Oregon. Thomas, good. Tom, you're Thomas here. Um, thank you for uh, for your time. We're actually the uh, the prequel to what Joe and the high school uh, link crew did, so we probably should have gone first. But um, it is what it is. Um, I, first, I'd like if they could go ahead and like in church rise. Okay. Nice. Um, these are these are part of the the web crew hero crew along with um, our student advisors. We have, and they'll go into more detail about it. But we have about 35-ish 8th grade student mentors who these guys have taken the time to train even before school started. Uh, we'll go start on the left, um, Christian Volbrek. What, what, we got to have a Volbrek on every link crew. So <laughs> Christian's ours. Um, Brian Kubik. Uh, also PE, Fine Arts, 6th uh, grade, Sadie Men, Plymouth alum, Sadie Men. Okay, good story. And then Maggie Sobstek, both Maggie and Sadie are counselors at, at Riverview. Not Riverside, because I know I'm going to mess that up <laughs> okay, at least once. Um, again, thank you for, uh, for giving us a little bit of time, especially after um, the budget meeting which took place. We appreciate it. After, after our first year, both myself, Mr. Bertram, these guys sat down and, and we really took a look at just kind of a state of the state of Riverview and said, okay, we have, we have students coming in from three different public schools and we have a number of students coming in from other schools and they really, as they come in, they, they come with different values, they come with different ways of thinking. They're really not, there's really no set path for, okay, this is, this is the Riverview way. This is how we act. This is how we handle crisis resolution. This is how we handle big boy and girl tests. This is how we make friends. And when we have disagreements, like you had mentioned, Bob, how do we listen to each other without having the person who is screaming be the one who wins all the time? And we started last year, uh, towards the end of last year, myself um, and with our, our mental health committee, uh, Maggie and Sadie are on that as well. Um, what is going to be a program, kind of a unified program, that's going to help us get all of our students on the same page and really get them thinking in one specific way, a positive way, taking pride in your school, um, and all the other good things that these guys are going to talk about. That's my introduction. I'm going to kind of fade. As much as I can in the shirt, I'm going to try and fade into the woodwork. <laughs> I, I feel like we're about to land jets. Um, but again, these guys are the stars, so I'm going to let them kind of take over. And I'll just be your uh, your roadie. So, with that said, you want to drink? Go ahead. Okay. I like this because I don't have to. Yeah. I don't like people behind me. It's like a decent thing, right? When they're sitting behind me. All right. Um, like Tom said, I'm Christian Balbrook. I'm one of our web coordinators, and 
what I need you all to do before we even get started, because we all live this together. We need to give Amy a round of applause for everything. <laughs> and how are you doing, Amy? Keep your hands right here. Keep your hands right here. Okay? We're going to do some. We're going to work together here. This is, I'm not a formal person, all right? Don't let the hair fool you. I'm pretty relaxed. Okay? <laughs> so, what I need you to do is every time my hand right here crosses this hand, I need you to clap. Seems pretty simple, right? So when I go like this, there we go. Half of us got it. We're good. We're going to get better. We're all a team. We're a community here. So whenever my hand crosses, oh, we're getting there. All right? So here's what I need from you. We're going to do it all together. We pass and we fail together because we're all one group. You got to thought about it. All right. Are we ready? Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Pass and fail as a group. We can do this. We're a community. We got this. Are we ready? <laughs> One more try. Maybe two. All right. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Now, some of you are starting to see a pattern. Okay? What I want you to do is I want you to maybe whisper to the person next to you that maybe doesn't see the pattern what the pattern is so far. Okay? And let's try one more time. Are we ready? Hey! Let's go. So that is how we started. Not started, but our first big assembly. So when we look up at the board right here, what is WEB? Okay? WEB is a year-long transition program that works with four components that contribute to its success. Basically, that top one is where we're at so far in our year-long process. We had our middle school orientation. And it comprised itself of a lot of things. The first thing that these students got to experience when they walked through the door into the Riverview gym was every single teacher and their 35 web leaders giving them a round of applause, blaring music. It's an exciting place to be. It's called the gauntlet. It's awesome. All right? And the kids are going in, and some are like, eh. <laughs> high fiving, and some are like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then they get sit down, and we do our intuition. And that's for our fifth graders and our web leaders to start building that relationship. Not that our fifth graders are these scared little sheep that have to just follow the flock, but that they can make their own choices, and that we can make choices as a group. And we can teach them the ways, the Riverview ways, to be successful in middle school. Our next couple steps that we have going forward from there is that we start doing academic follow-ups. That's where our chosen and vetted web leaders go into our fifth grade academic classrooms and give lessons on academic success, character development, Then we'll talk a little bit more about what that specifically means later, but they actually get to go in and teach lessons. And a lot of this might look like, hey, we're going to make these fifth graders great, right? Because we have all these supports for them. And what I think the best part about this is, is that we are taking a cross-section of about a fifth of our student body of eighth graders, and we're making them into great leaders, okay? So they're getting that opportunity to be those leaders. Then we get through the informal stuff, my kind of thing, where they get through social follow-ups. And that could be, hey, there's a musical going on in a couple weeks. Why don't we go on the same night and we'll sit together with those fifth graders and eighth graders? So they have something they can kind of look up to or that they can feel safe around when, as opposed to walking through the eighth grade hallway, tucked over and scared about getting their books knocked out of them. And then finally, as the year goes on, our hands go off, and the leaders that we have trained and have gone through the whole program start to connect with the fifth graders on their own way, and what's comfortable to them. We take the rein, we give them the reins a little bit, we back off, and we see them shaping into the leaders that they can be, and hopefully bringing those fifth graders through into our school and into 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, so maybe that they want to become those leaders. They have that mentor. They have that someone they want to look up to. So that's what web is. I talk a lot. I'm sorry, okay. guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we got started with this, with this program uh, towards, uh, in the springtime of last year. It was kind of a last-minute decision. Um, and Tom was like, you guys want to with California and Christian and I are like absolutely let's do this you know so we kind of got our team together and and even though we didn't we weren't trained at that time Maggie is formerly trained in Lakeview at a, at a former visit, or a school that she worked at so she kind of knew what we had to do we had to get our leaders together 
um, so we had them ready for the upcoming school year. So back in spring, we sent out um, some information to the teachers, what we're looking for in terms of a leader, um, and they gave us a pretty hefty group of students um, that could possibly be good leaders. Um, so what we did is we put together an interview schedule and we gave these students, pretty much every single one of them, their very first formal interview. And they crushed it. They did such a fantastic job. Yes, they were very nervous, but it was a fantastic experience for all of them. Um, they were really excited, really nervous, but you could tell that they were really proud of themselves. Um, so we did our interviews and then Christian and I went to California, which I will say that was the most tired I've ever been in my entire life. Um, it says California. We could have been in Siberia. We didn't know. Was, <laughs> we were in a conference room was, for the whole thing. Yes, or it sleeping. Was two, two and a half days full of just interactions with strangers. And I don't know how well any of you have been your introverts, but it definitely drained my batteries a little bit, but it was a fantastic experience, and I'm so glad that, you know, I got the opportunity to do that. Um, so then we came back, and then we dove right into training our leaders, um, which we did the week prior to um, um, starting school. Was it during P No, it was prior to PE. Um, so we had all of our leaders come, and we spent a total of 10 hours with them, just training them in all of the different activities all of the different methods that they were going to be using with their group of fifth graders that they had incoming. Um, and it was just all around a just really fantastic experience. So. so what's been done so far, the first piece that Christian mentioned in the beginning was that fifth grade orientation. So that was the first day of school. We had fifth graders only attending school. So we had the whole building and then our web leaders were there as well. Um, and we started out like he was describing in the gym. We had all the staff members there. We played some awesome music. The fifth graders came walking through our gauntlet where we're cheering them on, so it was, it was really fun. Um, we did an assembly then in the gym with activities like the one Christian did with the hand clapping. We just kind of got them pumped up and did a bunch of activities. Um, and then they broke up into small groups, and this is what our eighth graders were trained to do. Um, there were pairs of leaders that would have about eight to ten fifth graders and then they would go off to different places and different rooms and, and work in small groups. Um, so we had trained them in some different activities, icebreakers, get to know you, um, what is middle school like, things like that. Then the leaders took them on a tour, so we showed them you know, kind of how to do that at the building. They came back to the gym for a closing assembly. And then it was lunchtime, so we, it was really fun for them. We had the, our leaders and our fifth graders eat lunch together. So they all got to go through the cafeteria experience, had their lunch, um, and then the fifth graders spent the afternoon with their former teachers, so they had that, that time as well. So that was our kickoff. Okay, and now, okay, okay, I'm kind of excited. So, the orientation of pictures, obviously no event is actually complete without, like, pictures of just it going on. And you know middle schoolers, they like to take their selfies and all that stuff, but we got the legit stuff. So, if you can see, you have all the students just up in, like, the stands, and they're getting their inspirational talks, they're being given like the motivation to just start their middle school experience. Um, and as you can see on the left, I'm low-key kind of featured in these pictures. It's like kind of embarrassing, but it's, it was a lot of fun because we're walking around, we're playing these games with the students who are going to be taking that and bringing it into their own groups. And the fun thing about these quote-unquote games is no one's actually a winner, which I'm kind of happy about because if there was, I would have lost. But at the same time, <laughs> The students get to bring everybody together and make them feel important. And that's what the whole thing of web is, is just to make them feel like they're a part of a family. Um, when you're entering middle school, you're nervous, and this just kind of goes to show that you're all together in it, whether you're nervous, excited, um, pumped, whatever it may be, this is your new family. Um, and again, it goes to show that we're together, so yeah. Uh, just a little side note, you take a look at the, the picture down in the far right, these guys got our fifth graders so excited and so pumped up. And then by the time I walked into the gym, it's as close to being a rock star as I'm ever going to get. <laughs> I, I seriously had no idea what to say. It was, it was personally a very cool experience, so I felt yeah, and speaking of just being a rock star, that's kind of how we ended it for them. We had the leaders just kind of cheering them out so that they could go home and just feel like they accomplished something that day. They didn't have the stress of being the youngest on the totem pole. They had the 
embracement and like the courage to be the rock stars that they are. So they probably all felt like little Ariana Grandes and Justin Bieber's out there, but you know, they they finally felt like, hey, I'm a part of this school and I know where I'm at and what I'm doing and the leaders themselves too. It's cool to see them become these people who are going to be taking over one day and actually inspiring the kids just like we hope to do. Um, and I think that that's a really cool turnaround for all grade levels. Yeah. All right, and what's what's coming next? And we kind of went through it a little bit, but we our academic follows are coming up, and I think our first one is coming up in November. And we had our fifth grade staff of teachers get together, and what do they think their kids need? We give them about a month to kind of feel out their classrooms. What do their kids need? And we have a, a whole lot of information that was given to us at our training, and we were able to narrow it down to a few of them. So things like cooperation, creativity, teamwork, rumors or the type of lessons that our leaders will be able to take the fifth graders through. It's about a 35 minute lesson. It's basically a period of school that eighth graders are going to be teaching fifth graders, which is kind of cool. And it's a, not all of them. We have a select group that are focused on that thing because that's what they're excited to do. And then we have some that are more focused on doing those social follow-ups and kind of being the the rah-rah people, right? The ones that kind of bring the morale as opposed to bringing the content to them. And they're going to start going through that as well. And then, like I said, at the end, they're getting to the point where it's informal, less from us, where it's just a high five in the hallway, eating lunch with the fifth graders and being able to mingle with them and let them feel like there's not that hierarchy in the building, or sitting with them in a school event. Those are the types of things and those leader-initiated contexts where I think you get the biggest culture building and community building. Like, there's not a hierarchy or a tier system. It is terrifying. And it's, we're a unique school. Now, there's not a lot of fifth through eighth middle schools in the state. When we went to our training, I think there was only one other group there that was fifth through eighth. And this is from across the country. So, fifth graders, they're still elementary kids in their brain, you know? So they're coming into a middle school where there's a whole lot of big middle school issues when you get to 6th, 7th, and 8th grade that they're not familiar with. But just to kind of break down some of those walls, to kind of lower the ceiling and raise the floor as to where everybody belongs in our school. And I think one of the coolest things that we had was one of the most informal anecdotes that we had of the day was while the kids were in their classrooms doing their small group on orientation day, I walked into the office, checked my mailbox, I didn't have to do anything for you know, an hour. It was nice. I just had to walk around. And I talked to one of our administrative assistants and she said, I don't know what you guys are doing today, but it's going really well. I said, what, do you, what do you mean? She goes, I've only had one student down here complaining about a headache or a tummy ache the whole day, and normally there's a line out the door. So that alone tells you what that first day maybe meant to some of those fifth graders, to make them feel comfortable, to make them feel like they belonged in the building. And that's what web is. It's where everybody belongs. That's awesome. I wrapped that up really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I put that on that thing. <laughs> yeah. and, and again, thank you to all, all for these, these guys in the engine that makes the machine run. Um, the nice part about this, and uh, full disclosure, I, like Maggie, I'm Link Crew certified from my time back in high school. The thing that I saw as an advisor all the way up to an administrator Within a couple of years, you, you have all four grades. They're either going through web or they're trained as a leader. So you can literally, I think we've got a good culture. It turns a good culture into a great culture because I've, I've seen it first, uh, you know, firsthand. Another thing about the leaders that these guys interviewed, I sat in or I accidentally walked in. It was in our conference room. I'm like, you're busy. I'll come back. They were, as they were interviewing students last spring, it was a valuable life skill that these guys were putting our students through right off the bat as eighth graders or seventh graders soon to be eighth graders. Our leaders are not all 4.0 captain of the basketball team, captain of the cheerleading team types of students. We focus on getting students from all walks of life. So you could have an eighth grader who might have stubbed their toe as a fifth grader who have kind of pulled the nose of that plane up. So all of our leaders are relatable to all of our fifth graders because they come from all walks of life. So just a couple side notes that you know I wanted to add. But again, I'm really proud of these guys. They they've done a really great job. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you guys. Wow. That's that's awesome. I just I want to go home now. I'm just happy. <laughs> and...
I, I'm going to celebrate what we I just saw. That's fantastic. So, and I'm doing this tomorrow at yeah. work to see if I can. You'd be surprised how many attempts it took. <laughs> <laughs> Crushes were we better than the fifth graders, or did we fail just below? I'm that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on to finance buildings and grounds. Uh, all right, we need a motion to consider the approval of the certification of the 2022-2023 school district tax levy. Do we do these all at once or do we do them? Separate. separate. They all have to be separate. All right, just checking. All right. I make a motion that we consider the approval of the certificate of the 2022-23 school district tax levy. Second. First and second, all in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Uh, we need to consider approval of the 2022-2023 final budget as presented. Make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 final budget. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Is anyone opposed? Consider approval of the snowplow bid for the 2022-2023 school year. Oh, that bid, did we go over Just a reminder, we did at the Committee of the Whole meeting. Oh, that's right. Construction uh, that we've, we've worked with them since 2018. And no change or minimal change? Minimum, like $5 increase per service. Okay. <laughs> All right. Motion to approve. I move we approve the snowfall bid for the 2022-2023 school year. Second. All in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? And finally, consider gifts and corresponding adjustments. Are you going to go through those? Yes. Good. Yep, uh, we have, again, a great community that's always supportive, and uh, the evidence is uh, every month we have these gifts and corresponding adjustments. A donation of uh, $598.32 from Horizon Path for transportation to Milwaukee Zoo, Camp Lakota, and River's Edge. A donation of $1,414.44 from Fairview PTO for transportation to Camp Lakota, Milwaukee Museum, Building for Kids, and Milwaukee Zoo. A donation of $588.08 from Parkview PTK for transportation to the Milwaukee Zoo. A donation of $2,440.32 from the Riverview Activity Group for transportation to Sky Zone, American Family Field, and Kohler Andre State Park. A donation of $388.23 from the Football Booster Club and a donation of $776.07 from the Plymouth High School Fine Arts Booster Club. And uh, all of those would then be uh, adjusted in our budget. So I uh, need a motion to accept and I conduct corresponding adjustments. So moved. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? And thank you to everyone who donated. Uh, policy number eight. Consider the approval of the first reading of NEOLA policy updates, volume 31, number two. Right. And last Go week, ahead, I kind of gave an overview. There were a number of policies that they've recommended, and most of them are rather self-explanatory of just updating the terminology and so forth. The two that I mentioned last week that we wanted to highlight for everyone's review was there's an update for library media centers. It's policy 2522. And this, they've updated the language in the library media centers to align with what we've also approved earlier this summer if there's a public request for information. That the, if you receive a request for information from the library, it follows the same format as what any other curriculum request would be. Um, the second one that we wanted to highlight is policy 2414, and that's regarding human growth and development. They've added extra language to state that um, there will be an advisory committee that if there's a question and what is appropriate for 
curriculum and so forth, that, that we can establish an ad hoc committee, which is members of staff, parents, healthcare professionals, members of clergy, and other residents in the district. But that advisory committee then reports to us as the board, and the board has the final say of what is appropriate or allowed in a classroom if something's questionable. Um, and Kathy, myself, and Dan, and um, Katrina, we all met and discussed all the policies and went through these quite detailed back in September with the Neola representative. Okay, thank you. So we need a motion to approve the second reading, or first reading, sorry, first reading. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. I move that we approve the first reading of Neola policy updates, volume 31, number two. Second. All in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Thanks, Janelle, Kathy. Appreciate it. Uh, item nine, period of public participation. No one signed up. Uh, moving on, we'll go to board liaison reports, community ed, Sally. Always a lot going on in community ed. Over at the middle school, uh, sports, they are open to all children. Parochial students, homeschoolers, all can be involved in this. Classes, there's one for home alone. If your children are home alone uh, for a time, third grade through sixth grade, they can take this class, how to feel confident being home by themselves. Saturdays, they're going to start family swim time together. If the students uh, decide they want to babysit, they have a class to teach them how to babysit well. And then free movie nights. We have one on no November 7th and November 29th. You still have to register for that. Around our town. It's to go and see different uh, businesses around our town. Rec basketball open. Friday play groups for young ones are the second and fourth Fridays. Need to sign up for that. And, of course, all them great fitness classes are available. That's it. All right. Thank you, Sally. Uh, foundation, uh, I was out of town for their meeting, um, but I know that we're looking for grants, more grants, so uh, please encourage uh, your staff to submit. Um, we'd like to uh, continue to enhance the educational experience. So. How was Black Friday? Don't know. I wasn't there. I know, I missed you. I got my double burger and I double broth. I wasn't was there. Like, Bob, I, I thought you were going to grill I, it specifically I, for me. I wasn't there. Didn't grill. They did report that because of... Uh, yeah, I, I because I wasn't there <laughs> that they <laughs> sold more? They sold, yeah, they were a lot more customers for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they ran out of brats on a number of occasions because they were surprised by how many people Showed up. got double brats. Really? Yeah, the double brat order and the Oost burger order was uh, pretty prime. Which Wait, is what's the, that? The double brat and the Ham. hamburger patty I gotta together on a bun. <laughs> How long have you lived in Sheboygan County? I well, <laughs> sorry. No, this is an look at me. Burger. Do I look like a guy you that have eats? A double <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. List for their classrooms, and they're going to be posted on the foundation's social media and right. web page that teachers, that anybody in the community or anywhere in the nation ultimately could look at that list and then um, purchase those wish list items for staff. Tom, the, the team that went to California, was that with grant money from the foundation? Because I yeah. saw the application no. and yeah, at then... the last minute, we decided to switch it to working with any, uh, Amy and Ann, we, we thought it was best that we go through the grant, our mental yeah. health grant instead. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. But it it's that kind of presentation for the foundation would be really powerful on other initiatives. So um, that, that was really good. So, yeah, too bad. I wish the foundation had paid for part of it. <laughs> All right. Just charge us. <laughs> Send a check. Say Bob said. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, Family Resource Center, Dan. Yeah. So <clears throat> I kind of have some sad news. Um, our executive director, Carissa Frank, 
is uh, leaving the FRC. Um, so right now we're basically forming a search or in a higher committee. Um, so we're in the process of working through that and I'll have more details on Friday's board meeting, but um, be starting kind of starting over again a little bit. So I think she's been with us for about three years. Did a great job. Yeah, she did. And, she um, really did. She'll be missed. Yeah. So more details to come. All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, personnel, support staff update. Yes, we just have a couple of support staff uh, changes to report and no action required. Uh, Stephanie England has been hired as a special education aide at Parkview Elementary School. Uh, Amanda Meyer has been hired as an instructional aide at Horizon Elementary School. Uh, Dean Tenaken has been hired as a custodian at Plymouth High School. And Lori Schaub has resigned as a special education aide at Parkview Elementary School. That is all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, no items for the consent agenda. President's report, I'm just going to uh, refer back to the annual meeting report. Uh, nothing more to say other than we're all in this together and we can do a lot if we work together. So, uh, Dan. Yes, uh, ditto here again uh, with the, the, the same about the, the wonderful district that we live in. But I do have a couple of uh, student staff accomplishments, one of whom is here. Uh, Karen Johnson has been uh, uh, our district food service uh, director, has been named this year's Good Food Champion by Nourish. Uh, it's a fantastic organization. Hi. And if you didn't know, Nourish is located in Sheboygan Falls, strives to create a healthy community through good food education. It's been celebrating Good Food Champions in 2017 and started doing it that in that year. And uh, it, it's an individual or a group who has had significant influence on introducing healthy local foods to our community and has had an impact in advancing nutrition education. And that's Karen. So thank you, Karen. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, some uh, news from the uh, sports world. The boys soccer team won the conference championship. Girls cross country team won the conference championship and the county invite. The girls' golf program, you remember you approved that just a few short years ago, had uh, competed in its first ever WIAA regional this year and had some uh, kids move on to uh, state or sectional. Sectionals. Sectional. Maybe somebody's daughter who's sitting around this table. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to them. Uh, football finished second in the conference. Girls' tennis finished, uh, finished third in the conference. And swimming has, conference, has their conference meet on October 29th in Plymouth. And so all those fall sports are kind of wrapping up and either finished with the playoffs or getting into the playoffs. So more to come. And just a note, um, in, uh, I've been making some contacts with our legislators uh, advocating for certain things, but I'm also sending them good news about things that are going on here. And just we compiled, compiled the list. I'm not going to read all the names of the students, but um, compiled the list of names of all the students who've earned scholarships and how much they were for for our visual arts program in the last two years and the total is nearly five hundred thousand dollars in two years has gone to students to go to whatever their next stage of life is uh, in in education uh, in the visual arts alone and so I thought you know, our legislators don't know that you know the the reading and math scores drive those state report card things but there's great opportunity in other locations in, in the world of creativity. So I just thought I would mention that and uh, uh, we continue to work uh, as a comprehensive school district uh, to make uh, great things happen for kids that uh, no matter what their path is uh, leading them towards. So that's, that's all. Cool. Thank you. Uh, well, for the good of the order, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to Second. Second. All in favor, say yes. Yes. Thank you for coming.